This is Nick Williams with Temple of Geek, and today we are reviewing The Acolyte Episode 7, titled Choices. This will contain spoilers, so make sure you've seen the episode before you continue. In this episode, we finally have our flashback episode. We find ourselves back on the planet Brendok, where the witches live. But in this episode, we follow the Jedi. We have Master Indara, Sol, Kelnaka, and Torben. When we first see them, they are testing the land for something. There's a lot of frustration from Torben, who is Master Indara's Padawan. What we find out is they are looking for a Virgence. A Virgence is a place in the universe that is strong with the Force. It is both strong in the light side and the dark side. 100 years ago, there was a big hyperspace disaster that pretty much destroyed the planet surrounding it. But somehow, Brendok is thriving with life. Torben is not only frustrated, but also has a great desire to return to Coruscant, where the main Jedi Temple is. They've been on this planet for seven weeks. During their exploration, Master Sol goes off to a new part to explore. That is where he discovers Osha and May. He sees that they can use the Force, so he follows them and ends up back at the Witch's Temple. He scales the wall to get in to investigate further, where he finds the twins training in the Force. A lot of these scenes in this episode we saw from May and Osha's point of view, but now we're seeing it from the Jedi's point of view. Sol returns to the Jedi and is very worried about the twins. After much debate, the Jedi decide to head to the temple together. They slice into the door, which basically means hacking, and approach the witches. During their talk, Mother Anasea invades Padawan Torben's mind. And in that, she starts to manipulate him and gets him to reveal that he really wants to return to Coruscant, his inner desires. But in doing so, she unlocks repressed feelings. And as a Jedi, that can be bad news because that can lead to the dark side. As we saw in Episode 3, Mother Anasea agrees to allow the Jedi to test the twins for their Force abilities. We finally see Mei being tested, and of course she does lie to get out of it. Sol asks Master Indara if he can test Osha differently. She agrees, but you can see concern in her face as all of this is going on. After the twins leave, Master Indara must speak to the Council. And of course, the Council says no but Master Sol insists he has a connection with Osha and the twins might not be safe. Master Indara is worried that Sol has an attachment to Osha, and as we know, attachments for a Jedi can lead to the dark side. And the results from the blood samples they took from the twins come back, and they come back with some very unique readings. They not only have a high midichlorian count, which makes them very force sensitive, but they are basically the same person which means a soul split into two, and that can only happen in a virgence. As night falls, you could tell Torben is becoming very disturbed, and he's convinced something is wrong, and he actually goes off to go get the twins. Indara sends Master Soul after him. Meanwhile, in the temple with the witches, they're all having a conversation on what to do with the twins. The rest of the coven are very worried about their future because the twins are supposed to be their leaders. But Mother Anasea is insistent on being a mother and letting Osha go with the Jedi because that is what Osha chose. But Mother Coral is not having any of it. She convinces Mei to reach in and use her anger and make sure Osha cannot leave. And Mother Coral gets others to prepare for battle. When Torbert and Sol arrive to the temple, the door is sealed, so they decide to scale the wall like Sol had done earlier. And they approach the witches, but things are very tense. As we saw in episode 3, May starts a fire by burning a book. But we didn't see what happened afterwards and how the destruction came about. So what ends up happening is as she's burning the book, she's holding the fire with the oil and drops the fire and the oil together and everything spreads. So it's not the stone that is on fire, it is the oil, but that reaches the electrical and the electrical starts to catch fire. And as we know, electrical fires can be very dangerous. But May gets scared and goes to find help. What she runs out to find is the Jedi facing off with the witches. As May runs out, Sol thinks it's Osha. And what Mother Anasea does is ends up becoming this kind of witchy, uh, smoky apparition. And Sol, thinking he's defending Osha, takes out his lightsaber and ends up stabbing that apparition. And that's when Mother Anasea comes back to corporeal form with a lightsaber through her. She reveals to Sol that she would have let Osha go. She was going to let Osha go. And you could see the regret in his face. As Mother Anasea falls dead, May runs to her. And that's when Sol sees that it is actually May and not Osha because of the marking on the head. 
and Saul knows he screwed up. You can see that regret in his face. May runs off, Mother Coral attacks Sol, and the rest of the witches are attacking Torben. Torben's wielding a lightsaber as this whole battle is going on. Sol, however, is not taking out his lightsaber and not attacking back. And a lot of that is due to guilt. What we don't see is other witches in a side room. We hear them say, you shouldn't have brought him. Sol is thinking about Torben, but then we see Kelnaka. And the other witches in the other room are now controlling Kelnaka. So Kelnaka attacks the other Jedi, and there's an all-out battle. And it is not going well for the other Jedi. That is how Torben gets his scars. It is only when Master Indara comes in, tackles Kelnaka, and starts to probe his mind against the witches. During this mind battle, we see the witches essentially collapse. Not sure if they're dead or just passed out. Indara tells Sol to go get the twins. The twins are still inside and very much in danger. And that danger is due to the electrical fire because there's been a lot of explosions as that has been spreading. We see May and Osha on either side of the catwalk that is broken. And as an explosion happens, it's starting to drop. Sol stops it with the force. However, he cannot hold both of them. He keeps struggling and struggling, but then he chooses Osha and May drops. He rescues Osha and then they end up back on the Jedi ship heading back to Coruscant. Master Indara is livid at everyone, but especially Sol, because she questions his intentions, and she's sure that it is because of attachments. It's because of what he wants, not what is best for the twins. Instead of telling the Jedi Council the truth, they decide to concoct a lie. A lie about May starting the fire and that killing everyone. Indara's reasoning is that Osha has just lost everything, and why now take away her dream of becoming a Jedi? And by the end of the episode, we now have all the answers that we've been missing. My thoughts on the episode. I actually thought it was a good episode, and there are several reasons for this. One of them being is that we're finally getting the perspective that we've been missing this entire time. But the perspective from episode three was told from one point of view with a lot of missing parts. But now we see this from the point of view of the Jedi, and we get a full story out of it. So the flow, the pacing, all of it worked much better. So far, the second half of this season is solid, and it's much better than the first half, in my opinion. I feel like leaving out the information from the first half of the season made that half suffer. The storytelling, the pacing, that did not feel organic. Now we're actually starting to flow because we can tell a linear story. Part of what this show is about is showing the flaws in the Jedi and what happened between the High Republic and the prequels, where the Jedi started to essentially collapse. And I feel like this episode finally really starts to dive into it. We've gotten hints of it throughout the season, but now we see why. And it's the idea that seemingly good intentions aren't always good. That sometimes when the Jedi interfere with things, they actually disrupt a lot. And I find that very intriguing, and I think that helps set up the prequels much better. We also get a lot of lore in this, and as a geek like me, it is very fulfilling. We got the idea of a virgins. We got the idea of twins being created artificially because of this virgins. We got references to the High Republic books with the disaster from 100 years ago. We get references to the Night Sisters that are other witches in Star Wars universe, but we see these witches doing kind of crazy things. Crazy, but reminiscent of the Night Sisters. We finally get to see a Wookiee Jedi fighting with a lightsaber, which we've been wanting this entire time. I'm really glad Master Indara was the sane one between all of them. A lot of it because I wanted to see Carrie Ann Moss just be a badass Jedi, and I don't want to see Carrie Ann Moss as a Jedi being a bad person. Although I am disappointed on all of them choosing to lie at the end. I thought the acting was very good in this episode because we needed to see several of the characters uh, being disturbed, and we saw that kind of inner turmoil from a lot of them. Overall, a good, solid episode. I cannot wait for the season finale because we still have so many unanswered questions. So join me next week for the finale of season one of The Acolyte. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And until then, may the force be with you.